Okay. I like to clear something up very quickly and pretty easily. If I hear the same insane thing said like 20 or so times, I'm like, you know, there's a lot of confusion out there about something. You will not see another video like this in relationship to photography anywhere on YouTube. Um, there are a couple links below. One of them is from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's called the Dissectable Capacitor. What it does is it uses an electrostatic charge, and uh, they take the uh, capacitor apart, which comprises a glass jar and a cathode and the anode, and they show you that the charge is actually in the glass. Now, <clears throat> it is the case that herd mentality, you get enough people together, even if you have some really smart people in a crowd, um, the collective IQ of everybody just kind of drops. It's kind of how you can get people to do really, really evil things, kind of like they did back in Germany in the 1940s. You know, while people may or may not be, you know, very intelligent, if you put them all together, they, this has been studied endlessly. And uh, this is what a lot of board forums are like. And I actually run across this comment all the time, and uh, I'll just quickly hit on it. And uh, talking about me, talking about being glass being a capacitor, and then I'm going to explain it, and then I'm going to completely refute it, and you're going to learn something about lenses, I promise. Meaning me, it's just a ranting, you know, I, I'm just meaning me, you know, interspersed with uh, uh, saying that glass is a capacitor and light is an electrical circuit. Along with mystical voodoo about light supposedly uh, getting uh, worn down as it travels through glass. Now, see, I've actually seen this comment a lot of times, and I'm going to tell you and prove to you very simply, you know, the sort of stupidity that this type of comment is based upon. And it's based upon people not knowing anything about field theory. Whether you went to college or high school, you weren't taught anything about field theory. You weren't taught anything about capacitors. Uh, reflectors. You see, there's these neat little things called solar cells. When light hits them, they actually create a charge. And uh, if you go on Wikipedia or type in uh, glass capacitor, I mean, this is actually an image taken uh, from Wikipedia itself, written by electrical engineers. And the dielectric that it's referring to there between uh, the, uh, the cathode and the anode, it's called the dielectric, that's glass. You see, light is an electrical circuit. You know, if light was not an electrical circuit, uh, then a lot of stuff would be totally impossible, like solar cells and uh, a lot of other really neat stuff. Um, the capacitance, C, there's actually even a formula for the dielectric capacitance of glass. And it depends on, too, the additive and the permeati permeability and the permittivity of glass. Capacitance C increases with the area A over the plate with permittivity between the cathode and the anode, anode of the glass dielectric material and decreases with the plate separation between the dielectric glass uh, in the formula D. The capacitance, therefore, is greatest in the device of the glass material with the highest permittivity in the surface area. Anyway, it's a complicated formula. Nobody cares about that. Most of you aren't old enough to remember. You know how they have microwave-safe glass bowls? You know, back in the day, I guess I'm old enough to remember this. Back in the day, people have been making glass bowls forever. When microwaves came along, people still had those old glass bowls. And they, they were just regular friggin' glass, kind of like this old 19, I think this was made in 1940 or something like that, yeah, 47, 1947. You see how part of it has actually exploded out over here? Explain that in a second. Back in the day when you stick stuff in a microwave, that's electromagnetic radiation. If it was not a microwave-safe bowl, this happened to me like four times in life. I mean, if people are old enough, they'll know this. Uh, the uh, actual glass bowl would explode in the microwave, or at the very least crack, and it'll scare the hell out of you. And people thought, well, that's the food getting hot, you know, this is the bowl cracked under the heat. No. And what happens is, is that electromagnetic radiation is bombarding the water molecules in your food. Obviously, it does that, but it also builds up capacitance in glass, and once the threshold is reached, the glass would explode, or it would usually crack. It would go off with like a bang. It wouldn't break your microwave. There have been a couple times where microwave... Anyway, the point is is that, yes, glass is a capacitor. When you have... I don't, I don't know what sort of... People actually have seen this sort of insane stu stupidity, you know, repeated over and over again. And I understand that uh, people are only interested in photography, but how about understanding a little bit something about your paint and your paintbrush, that being your lens, 
And uh, why, like, if you have a lens, and I've got another link below from a world-famous videographer, and it's called Lens Comparison Test, where he's testing out a $35,000 Leica Sumalux against an old $8,000 Cook lens. And um, the uh, blue light, the more uh, glass that, that the light has to pass through to reach the sensor, the more the blue light is absorbed. Blue light is actually more energetic, and therefore the capacitance of the blue light. You ever heard of RGB, CMY, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow? When you actually detract or lessen the high capacitance blue light, this is why high element lenses have really poor blue saturation, and it's also why if you're taking portrait shots with a really high uh, element lens, the person will look jaundiced. And it's not that there's been more yellow added, it is there has been a lot of blue subtracted, and the person looks jaundiced. Now, if you don't believe me, then I'll give you the link below to a world-famous color-correcting videographer. He shows you the differences between depth and color saturation between this super over-corrected, insanely expensive $35,000 like a Sumalux versus an old Cook lens, okay? And also check the link below for the MIT video on the dissectable capacitor. Now, if you don't trust the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, then you must be a damn idiot, okay? You, mean you just have to be a damn idiot. Um, a prism, you kind of know how you shine light through a prism that it creates a rainbow? Well, y you know how this little glass prism works and why it actually separates out the light like that? It's because blue has a different capacitance than the red end of the spectrum. And what it does, it's, uh, I'm trying to explain this really, really simply in like the most basic terms possible without getting technical. It's kind of like when blue light passes through glass, it's like it's actually hitting a greasy spot in the road as it's going around the corner, okay? Kind of like a car versus red light. It does not get deflected as much. You end up with a spectrum. You know, you shine white light through a prism, you see beautiful rainbow. Why the hell now is the white light has passed through the prism? The blue light's way the hell over here and the red light's way the hell over here. The blue light obviously got deflected a lot more. It's due to capacitance. Lenses work the same damn way as this damn prism. And the same damn way the non-microwave safe bowls back about 20 years ago. Microwaves have been out longer than that, but you know, glass bowls have been around forever, and people started using them in the microwave, and then people that made microwaves, they, this is literally true. They had the realization like, oh, crap, all these people's glass bowls are exploding in their microwave. We need to talk to the people that uh, make these bowls for people's kitchens and have them put additives in the glass. And by the way, guess what? It's the same damn additives that they stick in lenses to change the dielectric permittivity. There are over 40 different elements. You know why Zeiss lenses are so heavy? Oh, they're metal. No, that's not the only reason. It's because they got lead in them. It is leaded glass. Lead is depleted uranium. It changes the nature of how light slips through a lens element. This is undeniable. This isn't mystical voodoo. This is absolute, total, hardcore field theory of Faraday, Steinmetz, all over. If someone wants to have a discussion with me about this arena of photography and lenses, let's have at it. You will not win. You won't win, okay? Okay, have you been studying field theory for over 20 years? Well, let's, let's find out what you know about lenses. I'm not referring to you. I'm referring to all these people that think I'm actually talking about like mystical voodoo, like I'm referring to unicorns or something. You know, the, <laughs> you know you, I mean, what sort of education did you get? I mean, I admittedly, you know, I went to college and high school. I had a lot of years of college. And nobody told us about capacity. You know, if you even you went to uh, electrical engineering school, maybe. The rest of you, no. You know, most of us didn't go electrical engineering school. Glass is actually, a, a, <laughs> glass is a capacitor. You can find it on Wikipedia. It is called a dielectric medium that sits between a cathode and an anode. Now, here's a list of some really neat elements that they add to ED glass. Niobium oxide, lanthanum oxide, thorium oxide, zir uh, zirconium dioxide, uh, titanium dioxide, calcium fluoride, lanthanum. Um, you remember back about six months ago when I had a Geiger counter and I had a really old lens and that lens was just stupid radioactive hot. I mean, the, the Geiger counter was just screaming like a schoolgirl. Why the hell did you think that heavily doped thorium oxide radioactivity lens that I had, and it was a big ass lens and it was really radio. Why the hell did you think that they put that in the glass? It's like, did you think, all, and all these other elements that are not radioactive, I mean, why don't you ask yourself that question? 
you know, just like, oh, for giggles, we're going to add these uh, exotic, expensive uh, uh, elements to the glass lenses, and, you know, just for giggles. Why do you think that is added? Why? You know, you kind of call this mystical voodoo. If you're going to call that mystical voodoo, then what you've said is some of the most uh, highly trained lens designers on Earth at Zeiss, Nikon, Leica are a bunch of idiots because they're adding these funky things to the glass that changes the dielectric permittivity and the magnetic permeability of glass. Back in the day, this is an electrical insulator from a power line, okay? Back in the day, they still use glass capacitors on the power lines, but now they have additives so they don't explode. You see how this one, when the power would go out, lightning storm or whatever, the linesmen would have hissy fits and cuss like drunk sailors because when they put the power back on, to the old-time telephone poles, and you know this is from an old-time telephone pole, there would be a surge through the lines, and the surge, which was wrapped around this glass capacitor, I mean, if it didn't blow out like this, it would explode. There are old stories that you can read where people would uh, be outside on their porch, and the old power lines back in the days when the power would get put back on after it went out for whatever reason, there'd be all these explosions. It'd be, these suckers would be going off like grenades on the street corner. Now tell me again that I'm talking about mystical voodoo when I talk about lenses and uh, light, uh, light capacity. I mean, I've heard this insane comment. I usually see this stuff. Someone will reference me this. They'll like, go take a look. It's like, I've seen it before, but I've seen it a lot. I mean, people actually think I'm talking about mystical voodoo when I'm talking about uh, light and how it, you know. Okay, so go explain a prism. Go explain a glass prism to me, you know. Oh, well, that's just a fraction, you know. That, that, that's a description. That's not an explanation, honey buns. That's a description. Why the hell do you think blue light is going way the hell over here and red light is going? Is a difference in capacitance. There is an irrefutable, quantifiable fact that blue light has more energy in it than red spectrum light. And when that light passes through one glass element and another glass element and another glass element and another and another... And another that affects the way the image is rendered once it hits the damn sensor. And that is irrefutable. It is undeniable. If anybody wants to argue about it, post a comment below and we'll have at it. We'll debate. Let's debate it. You know? Maybe you're right and maybe the rest of the, uh, the world that uh, established electrical engineering like uh, Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, and Heaviside and the fat, bald, tattooed dude that's talking to you now that's been studying field theory for over 20 years, maybe, yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, that also means that uh, Nikon and Zeiss and everybody else is sticking these funky elements in the glass. Lanthanum oxide, niobium oxide, thorium, not thorium anymore. Zirconium dioxide, titanium dioxide, calcium fluoride. You know, what, what, what do you think that they're sticking that in the glass for? For giggles? What, what, what do you think? Honestly. Let's, let's get serious here. Is this going to help or improve your photography? You know, it is a neat, interesting fact. I mean, some people actually like knowing neat stuff. And the next time you actually pick up a really uh, heavy elemented lens, it's like, this lens has got 14 elements, and you take a portrait shot... And then you wonder why the hell the person's face looks jaundiced and yellow. You're like, oh, I remember that fat tattoo. He said, you know, art, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. A, a lens, a high-quality photographic lens, doesn't matter how high-quality or low-quality it is, it absorbs blue light spectra at a much higher absorptive rate. It's called dielectric capacitance. And that is why, and check the two video links below, okay? That is why some of these super expensive lenses that are heavily overcorrected, the faces look jaundiced. It's not that you've added more yellow, it's that you've subtracted so much blue because of so many lens elements uh, in the actual lens itself. You know, 12, 13, 14, 24 elements. You know, what, what, what do you think? I mean, what do you think light is? I mean, do, do you think that... Um, if you were to uh, pass a bullet through a piece of wood, that it would arrive at the other side as opposed to passing a bullet through 20 pieces of wood? I mean, are you actually telling me that glass works any different than, say, a bullet uh, through, like, four pieces of wood instead of 20 pieces of wood? No, it damn well does not. You know, you shoot a bullet through 20 pieces of wood, it's probably going to fall out the other side, you know, so, so weakly that you could probably put, stop it with your hand. 
And you think that light operates any differently and that like magical coatings have suddenly appeared in the past few years to change that fact? Things have gotten a little bit better, but no, glass is still glass and it is a capacitor and it affects the way light passes through it. That is irrefutable, it is undeniable, and there is nothing that you're ever going to pull out of any place on the internet or out of any book that is going to tell you something opposite of this fact because it is a fact. It's a fact. So it, the next person that says that uh, talking about the light as an electrical circuit, well, may, yeah, maybe those solar panels don't work, you know, based on light. Maybe, maybe there's some mystical voodoo that's powering those solar panels. And maybe there's some mystical voodoo that was making non-microwave safe bowls explode inside microwave, you know. Please, for God's sakes, you're going to say something, then say something that you know something about. You know, I don't know anything about car repair. You don't see me talking about car repair, do you? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Catch you later.